Hi viewers and welcome to German Jam Cutter. Today I want to show you how to tell if Ruby is real or fake. With simple tests, which means we take a closer look at typical fakes and natural specimens of Ruby. At first we need our oil. I am using my Camellia oil with a refractive index of 1.47 to 1.47. We used it in the tutorial of how to tell if emerald is real or fake. Please check this out if you are interested in the difference between natural and fake emeralds. Why we are using oil? Oil has a higher refractive index than the air. Also gemstones have a higher refractive index. Before we start with the test we need a better light, which means I will use a transmitted light from my light table here so we become a much better view inside the stone when we dip them in oil okay let's start with a typical example a typical ruby wonderful color super clear super beautiful gemstone let's take a closer look what happens when we put them in oil we have a very homogenic color in this piece and I hope you can see it here, we have a little bit of color zoning right here. See, here is a small brighter stripe in our gemstone. I will show it on a photo. Well, here we see the brighter stripe, much better. Now I add a 90 degree angle parallel to the stone. And now take a closer look at these two points here. I will add a line for you so you see this brighter stripe is curved. And here we see an inclusion in our gemstone. Another example where you can see the brighter curved stripe a little bit better. Okay, let's go on. As you know, inclusions are always a good indicator of natural gemstones. Also in rubies we can find cavities, they can contain liquid, they can contain gas and solid faces. And here in this case it is very hard to tell if it is real or not. Later a little bit more to inclusions in rubies with some examples. Now let's concentrate on the color and the typical angular zoning up to hexagonal growth patterns in Corundum. I have found two super examples of natural corundum in blue. It is sapphire, but they show wonderful the angular row patterns here. And now let's take a look at a super example of sapphire for hexagonal row patterns, which we see here. Very, very good. Okay, but why it is so important if these stripes are straight, curved, angular or up to a hexagonal growth? And in this case here we have vernoil synthetic ruby or corundum. How we know that this is a vernoil synthetic ruby? Because of this stripe here. A typical showing curved growth structures often without any inclusions and a strong intense homogenic color. Sorry, it is very hard to see here for you this brighter stripe. They set it in this gemstone on the shorter side because it is harder to spot that this stripe is curved. These curved brighter stripes are always a very good indicator for the vernoil synthetic corundums. Next example is this one. Hey, don't go away. We need here for a direct comparison. We also have stripes, brighter stripes, but not curved stripes. We have some brighter and darker areas, which means we have color zoning in this piece. We have straight lines and we have inclusion. This here is a natural ruby. And what you see very good is the difference in the color. Remember what I've said in the emerald tutorial, they very often try to imitate the best qualities of a gemstone, which means the best color, high clarity, and also often a relatively good shape with a good symmetry. Straight, brighter stripes, 
are a good indicator for natural wounds. Curved rider stripes are the best indicator for Benoil synthetic rubies. Okay, you see it is not very easy to uh, see the difference in such stripes. I will show you now some other examples where we are also concentrating on the color. Here you see clear cap with good color and a smaller cabochon. You see we have some defects on it because all these stones I've picked out a very big lot from a goldsmith from old jewelry. Years ago I bought it. Such lots are often not expensive and often you have a lot of different types of uh, natural gemstones and also synthetic gemstones. So these lots are very good to study or learn a lot about gemstones. Yeah, this example is not the best. Sorry for that. I had hoped that we see it a little bit better. But I have another one. Not a cabochon. It is a faceted gemstone. And here we see it. Yeah. Maybe a little bit better. On the camera I can't see it very good, but here on my light table I see it much better. Okay. Also here in this cabochon here, we see we have this strong intense homogenic color and no inclusions. You see two natural examples here. We have many inclusions and also a little bit of color zoning. Often in faceted gemstones, they try to set the best color down in the pavilion here, which means when you have a dark stone with a brighter color zone, they try to set the brighter color zone here down in the pavilion. If you have a brighter gemstone with some darker color zoning, they try to set the darker zones in the pavilion. They always try to get the best out of materials and that's always and also a good indicator for natural gemstones. Here in this one, you also see we have straight growth. These bands here or lines are not curved. And also we see we have a super dark area here, especially here, and some brighter areas here. That's a pretty good indicator if your stone is synthetic or natural, but with rubies it is very very complicated. Yeah, we have a lot more uh, synthetic rubies. We not only have the Benoil synthetic rubies, we also have flame fusion rubies. The flame fusion rubies have some visual characteristics. They also have curved color bending or parallel curved lines but in red color. They don't have the brighter bendings we see here in the Benoil synthetics. The flame fusion rubies can be spot very good when you see curved color bendings, curved color lines in red. In contrast, the natural rubies have straight or angular row patterns. Don't forget it, angular zoning up to hexagonal growth. And in flame fusion rubies, gas might also be presented. Years ago I had also some assembled rubies. They have also bubbles from the adhesive between the pavilion and the crown. All these assembled fake rubies I've sent to a friend years ago. And he has a collection. So I can't show you an assembled ruby, but this stone is also an assembled stone. I will show you what you have to pay attention to. They are easy to spot in oil. Let's simulate it as a red one and you see the stone is colorless. If you want to know more, please be sure to check out my emerald tutorial. There's a 20 minute video full of tips and tricks for you to tell if emerald is real or fake. Yeah, we also have flux grow synthetic rubies. Flux grow synthetic rubies are complicated because they have fingerprint inclusions, but uh, they are looking very coarse, which means they are white and have a high relief. Natural gems have uh, liquid droplet fingerprint inclusions, which we know from my amethyst in emerald cut. In natural stones, such fingerprint inclusions are less coarse, and these flux growth synthetic rubies also can contain platinum crystals, often in triangular or hexagonal platelets. Yeah, you see, it is very complicated. And that's not all. We also have hydrothermal growth synthetic rubies. I don't have a hydrothermal growth synthetic ruby for you. They also have fingerprints, and it is 
super hard to tell the difference between a hydrothermal grow fingerprint and a natural gemstone because both are very similar. Yeah, you can see a difference in the grow zoning. Often the hydrothermal growth rubies have a chevron type growth zoning or wavy growth plane and often you find nail head included. Both types, which means the hydrothermal growth and the flux growth synthetic rubies, both types are usually more expensive compared to the melt processed synthetic, which means the van oil synthetic rubies and the flame fusion rubies. Yeah, that's not all, because rubies if they are natural, are very often treated. Each treated for better colors, glass filled for better clarities and colors. In general, about synthetic rubies, I want to tell you they all have the same chemical composition, crystal structure and properties as natural gems. The best way to take a closer look at typical inclusions in natural rubies and typical inclusions in synthetic rubies is the Hyperion Inclusion Gallery by Lotus Gemology. There are hundreds of inclusion examples. Natural rubies, treated rubies, glass-filled rubies, heated rubies, man-made, fakes, lab created, everything we talk about it is the best way to find out which inclusion is natural and which inclusion is an indicator for a fake ruby. I can highly recommend to take a closer look. You will find the link in the video description down below. Let's go in on and I will show you some more examples. Simulants. Simulants can be both. They can be man-made or they are natural, but they have completely different properties. I also have to pick out an example from the emerald video. These dyed quartz here, we know from the emerald tutorial, is a typical fake they also use for rubies. They try to imitate rubies like this or like this. There's a lot of inclusions and color zone. Don't have a dyed quartz in red, so I show you these dyed quartz here in green. Uh, they are also existing in red. You can see that in the Hyperion inclusion gallery, they also have a category of dyed stones. Take a closer look at it and you see the difference. The best indicator is the super high color concentration here in this cracks. I think you know what you have to pay attention to now to say that this is just simulant. I will show you another example and a little sneak peek of the next test video. It is about sapphires, which are also corundum. We also find rubies like this. So look at this. This stone here has inclusions. We have a uh, yeah relatively homogeneous color and we have this shadow here in the middle a little reddish shadow here in this yeah. such shadows are also a good sign for here you see it assembled stones they also made assembled stones like this which are a little bit harder to see. they use this uh, synthetic corundum here that the testing equipment shows corundum and people think, oh, it shows corundum, has inclusions, must be a natural sapphire in our case, also for rubies, emeralds. Just another example to show you what you have to pay attention to. If you have found a lot of indicators that your stone is a natural gemstone, then we have the next problem. I talk with you about treatments. We also have beryllium diffusion rubies and it is very often that they show a color rim around the edges, often in orange. All of this you can learn at the Hyperion Inclusion Gallery by Lotus Gemology. Remember the link down in the description box below. And here is a good example for natural gemstone. This one here, another one. Okay, make this little setup here for you. Now, with some more examples, let's start with this one here. Oh, that's a good one. Good material, natural inclusions, but it is not a ruby. This is a tourmaline, rubellite. Hard to tell the difference, but later I will show you a little trick to select between natural rubies and other natural red gemstones. So, stay tuned. Here is another example for a natural gemstone with good dark color. We have a lot of different types of inclusions. Color zoning, a little bit darker area here, a little bit brighter area here. Also this one has a 
intense color a little bit brighter here a little bit darker here and natural inclusions and this one here also a little bit darker here a little bit brighter here mineral needle inclusions this is a piece of glass here i've spot some curved lines swirls and we have very intense organic color a closer look real quick on this piece of glass here from the emerald video this is a good example so let's think it is red and imitates a ruby you see here these curved lines here 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 also a few swirls more homogenic color than uh, color zoning the biggest indicator all of these tiny inclusions here are bubbles please uh, remember back we talk about synthetic rubies i can show this visual character here from the flame fusion rubies they also contain gas bubbles often they are super super tiny like like these ones here not such big ones and they have curved bands in red this as a quick example for you these both stones here are natural garnets i will show you another trick to select between other red gemstones and garnets. This is here a tourmaline, a rubellite, and this is a natural. Ruby. So please remember these natural gemstones here for our next test. I will clean them and I'll be back in a second. Okay, now I've cleaned our natural gemstones and made it a little bit darker. Check out what happens. I'm using UV light and we see all natural rubies are UV active. Here we have a medium to strong UV active ruby. The ones are strong enough to see them on the white background and the other red gemstones are not UV active. Attention! Why? I will show you something. All of these stones here are synthetic rubies. We remember back, all the synthetic rubies have the same chemical composition, the same crystal structure and properties as the natural gemstones, which means they are also UV active. And now, little extra tip from a gem cutter, always take a look at the shape of a gemstone, also a shape can tell a lot. Compared to natural materials, the synthetic materials are cheap. They can cut relatively good commercial cuts with a good symmetry because they have enough material for faceting. Now let's take a look at this ruby here. We have a much bigger table facet. And here in this natural ruby we see often they try to use the maximum out of it. Look how flat this piece of ruby is. Check this out. The pavilion here looks more like a, like a rose cut. Way too flat. And we see this also here. We have a huge window here. It is always and also a good indicator to check the symmetry, the shape, the proportions. To get a better feeling for the commercial shapes, you can take a look at the faceting database. I will also set a link down in the description box below. Check out the typical commercial cuts always. Be critical if a stone is too perfect, too perfect in shape, too perfect in clarity, too perfect in color. They often try to imitate the best. Maybe I can show you a little bit better here in this light. Here you see it much better. Look how perfect this stone looks here. It looks like a super expensive ruby, but it is just a synthetic stone. I can show you another very strange cut. Yeah, very strange cut. Why? Because you see here is also a big window. Not enough material at the back. They cut it on size or on weight. They have not enough material here or there was a super big inclusion, super big crack, very brittle area. So the culet of the stone is on the left side and not in the middle. Such odd shapes are always good indicator for natural gemstones. I think this is another good example for you to show you what you have to pay attention. I don't want to make it too complicated because there are hundred or thousand types, different types of inclusion. Just want to share a few tips that uh, 
help me myself. Thank you very much for watching my video. I really hope you have learned a little bit, you have fun with such experiments, such little tests, or in general gemstones, especially gemstone cut-in, faceting, and you're not already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe really helps my little channel. Turn on future notifications if you don't want to miss a video. Please feel free and help sharing it with your friends and all people are interested in gemstones. Help them get a better feeling for natural gemstones and the typical fakes. If you like this video, don't forget to tweet the thumbs up. Have a nice week. Bye bye.